My friend Irma. Hi, sweetie. What are you doing? Oh, they have an intelligence quiz in this magazine, and I'm just checking my answers. An intelligence quiz? Yes. Jane, is Armadillo a country in South America? <laughs> no, not lately. <laughs> Wrong, huh? Yeah. Well, what about an enchilada? Is that a Mexican hat? <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, it's a Mexican dish, but you could put it on your head if you want to. Uh, well, that's two I've got wrong. But I know this one I answered right. Pocahontas are the mountains of Pennsylvania where the Indians go skiing. <laughs> Correct, Jane? Well, that's where I have three wrong. The, uh, the next is identify the following. Lily Ponds. That's the place where they grow flowers in the water. <laughs> Go on. Uh, now, the word here spelled L-O-U-V-R-E. Oh, I know what that is. That's a French boyfriend. <laughs> French boyfriend? Yes. Louver. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sure, like in the song, Louver, Come Back to Me. <laughs> Cookie, in this test, how do they rate your intelligence? Oh, it's simple. If you get 10 out of 20, you're fair. 15 out of 20 is good. And 18 out of 20 is excellent. I see. How many did you get? 19. 19 right? 19 wrong. <laughs> How many did you get right? None. I only answered 19. <laughs> the 20th was too tough. Oh, too tough, huh? What's the question? Who invented the bell telephone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's really tough. It's almost as tough as what's the name of the Mississippi River. <laughs> oh, is this the first time you have tackled this intelligence quiz? No, I did it last month in the Modern Girl magazine. How'd you make out? They canceled my subscription. <laughs> hey, Jane. Well, you know, come in. Tommy, me, Professor Kropotsky. Hello, Jane and Irma, my two little termites. One heading into the wood and the other with a wooden head. <laughs> No, pardon me, Jane. It's just a little joke I made up because I'm so tickled. Tickled? You mean you didn't hear? What are you talking about? Haven't you noticed how quiet it is around here? Yeah, it is quiet. Sure. Now when you hear a shrill sound, you know it's either the patrol wagon, an ambulance, or a foghorn. And not Mrs. O'Reilly singing Chloe. <laughs> well, what? I, I don't understand, Professor. They took Mrs. O'Reilly to jail. Jail? Well, what for? She was arrested for disturbing the peace. Well, what happened? Did she get into a fight? No, but not for fighting. For singing. For singing? Well, that's not disturbing the peace. It isn't. Did you ever hear her do a Swiss yodel? <laughs> This not only disturbs the peace, but Switzerland, who's been at peace for 500 years, starts issuing out ammunition. I still don't understand. Tell me what actually happened. Well, you know Mrs. Hogan. Yeah. Oh, you mean the landlady in the next building? Yeah, yeah. She called the station house and put in a complaint against Mrs. O'Reilly. How do you like that? Well, she and Mrs. O'Reilly have been enemies ever since we've lived here. Yeah, that's right. You see, Mrs. O'Reilly and Mrs. Hogan are the same age. And they resent having either one around to remind the other that anybody could be that old. <laughs> well, you know, we, we can't just sit around while Mr. O'Reilly's in jail. We've got to do something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's get up a petition to keep her there. Oh. <laughs> Professor, now we know you don't mean that. Of course not, after all she did for you. Remember when you had double pneumonia and Miss O'Reilly used to come up every day and bring you hot soup? In no time at all, you were out of bed. Well, I had to get out of bed. That soup was killing me. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, we just heard about... Where are you? Oh, did they release you? Oh, I see. Sure. D don't you worry about a thing. We'll take care of it. Goodbye. Well, where is she? What did she say? She's all right, but she's still being held by the police. And why is she complaining? She's been trying for years to get a policeman to hold her. Uh, <laughs> Professor, will you please 
be serious, she's got to have bail. We've got to help her. Bail? How much? Five hundred dollars. Well, we can't raise that much between us. Let's relax. We are safe. <laughs> we don't have to raise five hundred. All we need is twenty-five dollars for a bond. Let's see now. I've got ten. Irma? Jane, you know I'm broke. Yeah. All right, all right. Here's the other fifteen dollars. Oh. Thanks, Professor. I knew you'd come across. Well, I'm only doing it because Mrs. O'Reilly might start singing in jail, and I don't want they should have another prison riot on their hands. <laughs> well, Mrs. O'Reilly, you can relax now. You're back home and you're safe. Yes, thanks to you. Oh, it's such a comfort to know you have friends standing by that you can count on. Irma, Jane, a new professor. <laughs> oh, no, please, Mrs. O'Reilly, stop crying. <laughs> your mascara is running down all your wrinkles. <laughs> Not only does this make your face look like a road map, but when your mouth is open, it looks like all the roads are leading to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> interrupting, will you? I'm trying to get the basic facts. Mrs. O'Reilly, what what makes Mrs. Hogan dislike you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm younger and more attractive. <laughs> well, I have never seen Mrs. Hogan, but now I don't want to. <laughs> you know, Mrs. O'Reilly, it looks to me like this woman is determined to make things tough for you. My advice would be to get a good lawyer. Oh, I will not. I'm not spending money on lawyers. But, Mr. O'Reilly, you don't know anything about defending yourself. What if the judge wants to see your mandamus and you've got your corpus in your briefcase? <laughs> How's that again? Huh? Oh, please, Jane, I work for a lawyer. I know all about courtroom procedure. Well, I'm not going to worry about the law. My plea will be humble and simple, and I'll convince them my singing is art, and art should never be stifled. You got a good point there, Mrs. O'Reilly. Just remind them that every singer has a style. Sinatra is a groaner, Johnny Ray is a crier, and you are the newest thing, a screecher. <laughs> That's a fine way to talk, and I was counting on using you as a character witness for my defense. Now, I think Mrs. O'Reilly should rest from her ordeal, and then we could all decide upon a plan of action. Oh, that's a very good idea, Jamie. Come on, Miss O'Reilly. Why don't we, we go up to my room and chat a while? Hmm? Well, why your room? Well, now, there is a chance you may have to go to jail. And after sitting in my room, your cell will seem like the Waldorf. <laughs> oh, Jane, I'm worried. They'll take her away and we'll never see her again. Oh, now, Cookie, come on. It's not that bad. It's terrible, and I know where she'll be sent. All right, where? Leavenworth? Devil's Island? Brooklyn? <laughs> no, Sing Sing. Because, because she, she was, was singing. singing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess there's only one way to convince you. Here's a law book that your boss, Mr. Clyde, once left years ago for you to read, remember? I'll read the passage on disturbing the peace, okay? Okay. Now, wait a minute. Delinquency, dissipation. Ah, here it is, here it is. Uh, disturbing the peace, section 415 of the Penal Code. Every person who maliciously and willfully disturbs the peace or quiet of any neighborhood or person by loud or unusual noise or by tumultuous or offensive conduct or threatening, traducing, quarreling, challenging to fight or fighting or who on the public streets of any unincorporated town or upon the public highways run any horse race for a wager to amount to any gain or profit in such unincorporated towns or use of vulgar, profane, or indecent language within the hearing of woman or child in a loud and boisterous manner is guilty of a misdemeanor. Well, that's plain enough. <laughs> plain! Why you aren't allowed to sing in the street? <laughs> What's that got to do with Mr. Riley? Oh, Irma, please, if you don't mind, I'll go on, huh? Upon the conviction of any court of competent jurisdiction, the offender shall be punished by a fine of not more than $200 or by imprisonment of not more than 90 days. Well, let's see, $200 for 90 days? Well, at least when you're in jail, the rent is cheap. 
When I go to the trouble to read these things to you, why don't you at least try to understand? This is very serious. Well, I know it is, and I've got to do something. We can't let Mrs. O'Reilly go to court without a lawyer. Oh, honey, you heard her. She doesn't want a lawyer. Now, look, Irma, you, you have one role to play in this thing if we're going to help Mrs. O'Reilly. What's that? Well, they'll probably call you as a character witness, and um, I want you to say that, that you have heard Mrs. O'Reilly sing many times, and the sound of her voice would best be described as the, um, um, the singing of a whippoorwill in the sunset. The sound of her voice would best be described as the singing of the whippoorwill in the sunset. Yeah, all right, Cookie. Now, I am the judge. Have you heard Mrs. O'Reilly sing? Yes, and it can best be described as the sound that comes... Yes? ...when somebody is whipping will in the woodshed. Oh, no. <laughs> Miss Peterson. Miss Peterson. Yes, Mr. Clyde. Get your notebook, please, and take a letter. All right, sir. Uh, I'm ready. Mr. Gordon Young, uh, I understand that you have ten heating units at your disposal. Since three of the heads are slightly cracked, I think your wife is talking through her hat when she asks that amount of money. I do not wish to see my client stuck. Sincerely, Milton J. Clyde. Got it. Would you please read it back? To Mr. Gordon Young, my client is slightly cracked from the heat. And his wife needs money for a new hat as her head is stuck in the disposal unit. <laughs> no, Miss Peters. Tell me, did you ever study shorthand? Of course. Pittman or Greg? I don't remember the name of the teacher. <laughs> well, I went to school for three years. Then how come you can't read your own dictation back? can read it back. Oh, you can. Well, what's this word you wrote? What word? Yeah, this line with the hook. That's the word wished. Uh-huh. And uh, what's this word? Where? This, uh, this circle with the little tail. That's no word. We just got a cat and I'm drawing him. <laughs> Maybe I should hire the cat. What, uh, what word is this, Miss Peterson? These two little circles joined together by a straight line. Let me see. Two little circles joined together by a straight line. Is that uh, the word disposal? No. Client? No. Should I let you know when you're warm? <laughs> see. Two little circles joined by a straight line. Oh, I know. That was just to remind me to tell you I sat on your eyeglasses again. <laughs> you what? You unmitigated, insipid violation of intelligent endeavor. Please, Mr. Clyde, not so fast. Who is this to? Oh, no. <laughs> Miss Peterson, I oh, will... Please, Mr. Clyde, don't yell at me. I'm so upset. I don't care. I, I, I... What is it now? Well, Miss O'Reilly was singing and someone had her arrested for disturbing the peace and now she's going to jail. Is there something you can do about it? Yes, I would like to buy you singing lessons. <laughs> Please, Mr. Clyde. Miss O'Reilly doesn't want a lawyer, so I thought that maybe you could take the case. Well, how is that again? Uh, I mean, maybe you could tell me things that I can tell her for her defense. Oh, you would like to give a friend a break. Exactly. Very well. If I were you, I would wait until the trial was over. Yeah. And when the judge says 90 days, jump up and say, Your Honor, it wasn't Mrs. O'Reilly. I was the one who did the singing. <laughs> but then I'll go to jail. Consider me your friend and thank you for the break. <laughs> Well, oh, come on in, Professor. What's wrong? You look worried. Well, why shouldn't I be worried? I got to go to court, too, and say I like Mr. Riley's singing. This is like saying the, the, the food at the gypsy tea room is fresh. <laughs> it's me, girls. Are you at home? Yes, come in, Mr. Riley. We were just waiting for you, Mr. Riley. <laughs> oh, come on now. Pull yourself together. What's wrong now? Everything is going against me. I tried to get this singing teacher, Professor Slutkin, to testify that my singing is pure art. Yes? He suddenly left town. I can't understand it. He's 64 years old. I just can't believe he's been drafted. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? 
<laughs> Look, Mr. O'Reilly, why don't you play it safe? You still have time to get a lawyer. No, it's out of the question. I can't afford it. I saved up a little money so I could visit my two sisters in Philadelphia for the Thanksgiving holiday. And I'm not letting anything spoil it. Besides, I know I'm innocent. If only I knew something about courtroom procedure. Well, that's, that's real easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. I've gone to court lots of times with Mr. Clyde. First, the judge says, does the defendant have anything to say before the court finds out why he is guilty? No, 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 all right. <laughs> now, that's enough. Uh, uh, Ms. O'Reilly, since you're determined to defend yourself and since we're going to be your character witnesses... Uh, don't you think we'd better have a little rehearsal? No, that's a good idea. You be the judge, Janie. All right. Now, now will the first witness, um, Professor Kropotkin, you take the stand. Yeah. Huh? Your name? Kropotkin. You promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If I did, she'd hang in the morning. <laughs> Please be serious. Now, come on. Do you know the defendant, Mrs. O'Reilly? Oh, yes, indeed. How long? About 40 years. I met her when she was 50. <laughs> now, look, Janie, Janie, this whole thing terrifies me. Why? If I say that I like her singing, you know what'll happen? The most that can happen is that they'll make you take a lie detector test. <laughs> I'm not afraid of a lie detector test. I just don't want to have to take a sanity test. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, please, call somebody else. Maybe maybe I'll be stronger in the morning. Oh. Go ahead, Mrs. O'Reilly. Call your next witness. Miss Irma Peterson. Miss Peterson, will you take the stand? Okay, honey. No, honey, no. <laughs> Irma, I'm, I'm the judge. You uh, address me as your honor. <laughs> yes, your honor. <laughs> your name? Irma Peterson. You know the defendant? Yes, yeah, she's our landlady. She's a sweet, kind, and gentle soul, and I know she's going to paint our kitchen next week. Irma. <laughs> Irma, no hints now. Now, tell the court, what is your occupation? I'm a secretary. Confidential? Well, confidentially, my boss doesn't think so, but I do. <laughs> your witness, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Irma Peterson, you're a tenant in my apartment building, is that correct? Yes, me and the judge. Uh, <laughs> you heard my singing? Would you say it was annoying? Of course not. Many a night I lay awake listening for you to stop. <laughs> what? Oh, no, no. Oh. Believe me, we're going to have trouble. Trouble? Yes, I already told her to memorize a line that your singing was like a whippoorwill in the sunset. and You should see what came out. But, but why don't you give us something real simple with, with, with small words? Well, all right, let's try, uh, such as... Well, uh, just say that uh, uh, Mrs. O'Reilly's singing makes you think of when you were a baby. It reminds you of how your mother used to sing to you as she rocked you to sleep and you were sick. Oh, a child wouldn't get that mixed up. It makes me think of my mother rocked me to sleep when I was sick. <laughs> The Civil Court of the State of New York of the 15th District of the City of New York is now in session. The Honorable Judge Jonathan J. Canova presiding. Order in the court. All right, clerk. Let us proceed. Call the first case. Mrs. Hogan versus Mrs. O'Reilly. Will they come forward, please? Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. That's you. Now, don't you get nervous. We're right with you. Mrs. O'Reilly, you are charged with violation of Section 415 of the Penal Code disturbing the peace. How do you plead? Not guilty. Very well. Are you prepared to present your defense to counsel? If you don't mind, Judge, I'd like to defend myself. Oh, very well. Call your first witness. Irma Peterson, take the stand. Now, remember, Irma, your mother rocked you to sleep. Uh, Irma Peterson. Coming, Your Highness. <laughs> Miss Peterson, you will address the judge as judge or your honor. Oh, I will. What do I call you, Sergeant? <laughs> You don't call me anything. Just address your remarks to the judge. State your name. Irma Peterson, State, New York, formerly Minnesota. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth, have you? <laughs> well? 
I'm sorry. All I got was swear, and I'd rather not if you don't mind. <laughs> Lady, will you please answer? That... All right, clerk. Let us proceed. A- and, Judge, I'll try to make my answer as quick as I see you're getting ready for bed. Bed? Yes, and I think that black nightgown you have on is very becoming. <laughs> I knew I should have stayed with the traffic squad. <laughs> I'll come right to the point. Irma Peterson, you've often heard me sing. What do you think of my singing? Uh, you're singing? Now, what were the exact words? Uh, when you sing, it makes me sick. It reminds me to throw rocks at my mother. <laughs> what? I mean, my mother gets sick and wants to throw rocks at the... I mean... Sorry. <laughs> Having heard the testimony of both sides, it becomes a question of whether Mrs. O'Reilly's singing represents the basis for a case of willful misconduct. Your Honor, there's only one way to settle this. Let me sing for you. No, 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 no. no don't do it, Mr. O'Reilly. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> uh, Mrs. O'Reilly, uh, maybe the professor's right. Let's not carry this thing too far, huh? Oh, don't, huh? don't worry, Janie. I'm in fine voice. Order, please. Well, go ahead, Mrs. O'Reilly. You may sing. <coughs> My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. You may search everywhere, but none can compare with my wild Irish rose. That's enough. That's all. But you didn't give me time to finish the first chorus. Don't worry, Mrs. O'Reilly. I'll see that you get plenty of time. <laughs> this court is now ready to pass sentence. I find the accused... Oh, just, just, just a minute, Your Honor, before you finish. Please, could I have a word with you in private? Very well. This court will call a short recess. <laughs> Due to new evidence presented, case dismissed. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, Professor, how did you do it? Well, I signed an affidavit that Mrs. O'Reilly would sing only in her apartment after she had it soundproofed. (laughs) Oh, Professor, you did that for me? Now, look, now, look, please don't get mushy. (laughs) I've had a hard enough day. But I can't understand... You mean to say after he heard me sing, the judge still thought I was guilty of disturbing the peace? Oh, of course not. No, no. He wanted to change the charge from disturbing the peace to carrying a deadly weapon. (laughs) 